everyone, hey y'all, welcome back to the channel, and I feel a sense of accomplishment today because we're finally rounding out the duo of the horror cons, the Decepticon headmasters that turn into planes, and one's a gorilla, and the other is a dragon? Because he's Snapdragon. Although it's questionable if he's a dragon. We'll talk about all of it when we dive into this guy in the latest Gapa True review. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble host, Dennis Molden, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. While you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, The Autobot Family, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe vs. DC Universe vs. Marvel, and all of my social media links. They're all down in the description below. If you want to help the channel, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. And this is the new Earthrise uh, Voyager class Snapdragon. And I was excited when this guy was announced. As a matter of fact, back when we had the Titan Master of... Ape face. I said, you know what? It'd be nice if we had a proper sized ape face. As a matter of fact, it'd be nice to have ape face and Snapdragon. And then when we got the uh, monster bots, I said, you know, in Japan, Snapdragon and ape face were kind of adversaries to the monster bots, at least once, once or twice. And it'd be nice to have both of them. And lo and behold, when Siege came along, we managed to get ape face. And then, of course, I, like everyone else, clamored for this guy. And we finally got him. Over 30 years waiting for an update since the G1 days. Here's a perfect example of a character. Like, instead of giving us the same over and over and over again, here's a perfect example of a character that was long overdue for an update. Is this going to live up to the hype? Is this a good enough update? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And so here we finally get to take a look at the other half of the Decepticon Horrorcons, and that is Snapdragon and his claimed fame uh, well if you know him from the Japanese fiction then really it's him and Ape Face largely flanking uh, Galvatron and having some run-ins with the monster bots uh, if you know for example the rebirth then his claim to fame is really kind of mauling Daniel which led to the Autobot Headmaster technology and uh, Daniel becoming the head of RC this is his first update, I do believe, since G1. I know there's been some third-party options, but first official update. Maybe it'll be another 30-plus years before we see another one. Who knows? So let's hope this guy's great. But before we look at him, let's take a look at his packaging first. And this is his packaging. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have nice artwork of him over here, our typical over here, and on the back, of course, we have all of the images as always, and he does come with one of those red decoder things, and if you use it on his piece of the map, then you find out that it is Biosphera. Who knew? For those interested, here is the map piece, and of course, here is Biosphera. Uh, I don't have the decoder right now in hand, but you get the idea. He comes with two of these beautiful purple blasters. I love this shade too, man. And they can go in his hands or on any of the 5mm ports. And these are the instructions. They're pretty good. I mean, they're Earthrise instructions, which are generally kind of nice. Though I don't see any reference by name to his uh, headmaster partner, that of course being Krunk. I mean, we see down bottom that there's a little thing that shows where you put Krunk, but I don't see anything that says his name. Speaking of Krunk, and there he is slathered in paint. There's a lot of like pink paint on this guy. It's generally the look he should have. It's arguable that the pink should possibly be red, but that's debatable. Uh, it looks like Krunk. Uh, it has the same sort of articulation as all of these Titan Masters. I mean, the articulation for it is like a two. He can get in a seated position and the arms move ever so slightly. They can move forward, a little out to the side, nothing spectacular. Uh, that's about it. The transformation when you just flip the legs down like you do with all of them. So that's about, you know, again, I'm going to say two. But the paint on this guy and the detailing right down to his 
uh, purple face and red visor is undeniable. Honestly, I'm going to say that that's a solid nine for sure. Here he is with all of the other Decepticon heads, at least. And you can see who has the most paint and who doesn't have the most paint. Obviously, poor old Vorath and Monzo have the least, but uh, the other three lads, they have varying degrees of success. And definitely the two Voyagers that we've gotten in both Siege and Earthrise have the most. And so here we are with him in his robot mode and his head is back on and this is pretty fantastic. Uh, look, I said you could put the blasters anywhere. I have one in his hand, I have one on the upper arm. There's another five millimeter peg there on the side. There's one on the back. You could put it on like either side of his chest if you wanted to, uh, even down here on the lower leg. So there's a ton of options. On the, the wing that's on the inside of the arm, you could place it there. So there's a ton of options where his blasters could go or anything else that you want to add that has a five millimeter peg to it. Uh, I think that that's pretty great. I'm going to take these off for now, however, just so I got them sort of out of the way and out of my way. Um, and then we can kind of look at this guy in his glory. Paint apps, that's where we will begin. And honestly, I think it's a 10. I think that this is pretty much perfect. Now, the argument could be made that in North America, if you go by the animation, He's probably not supposed to have the Decepticon symbols on either side of his chest. I feel like sometimes they were there, they weren't. However, they were definitely pretty consistently there in Japan. And uh, you know what? Besides that, the models for North America and Japan pretty much look the same. Nothing worth talking about in terms of differences there. It's a 10. This is undeniably Snapdragon, which is nice. Then we get to the articulation. I'll say it now, he's a fine plane. Uh, in his dragon mode, which is really more of a T-Rex, uh, there's a couple of things that I'll mention when we get there that I would have liked to have seen, but they are kind of what they are, and it's okay. In this mode, the main mode, well, we have the head that can go left and right and kind of wiggles up and down, but not much. It's a secure connection, too, which I like. The shoulders can go ooh, all the way around, I think. Yeah, they can go all the way around. Uh, I love that they can go so far to the side and that we have like a hinge basically in here or at least a mold, some molding I should say that like really sort of fills in what could be maybe like an unsightly gap type of thing. We have uh, a bicep swivel. I'm, I'm sure we do. Yeah, I was going to say it's pretty tight though. Do we have a wrist swivel? I don't think we do this time around, which is unfortunate. The elbow is what kills me, man. The elbow only goes this deep. If there's a way to do it deeper, please let me know, but I'm not seeing it. And like, I don't, I don't see a way to make that any deeper. That is a bummer, man. I'm not going to lie. I wish it was molded. I get why it was molded the way it was, but I wish it was molded slightly differently to get a deeper elbow. Uh, we have hips all the way out to the side. They go all the way forward. Very nice. All the way back. Very nice. Thigh swivel. Very nice. Uh, we get, you know, about 90 degrees at the knee, which is also nice. And we do get very deep ankle tilt. Um, everything is quite good oh and we have a waist right yeah we have a nice swivelly waist everything is good quite good except for those elbows that's the only thing that's hurting it for me i wish they were deeper overall though you're definitely going to be able to get some great dynamic poses it's almost perfect articulation i also missed miss a wrist so i'm going to say it's i'm going to say it's solid 8.75 so we have a 10 we have 8.75 the guy right now is about a 9.25 or so roughly maybe nine and a half somewhere in that range it's really well done and here he is with the other decepticon headmaster beast uh I, I like these some people complain about them and there were issues with a couple of them most notably weird wolf or wolf wire Apparently has a breakage issue at the head. I've never experienced it. I've always been careful with it though, uh, because I'm aware it could happen, but I, I haven't experienced it myself. A lot of people complain that mind wipe is too small. I don't, I think it's fine. He's a bat. He probably should be a smaller beast than like a gorilla and a wolf and a crocodile and a dragon, tyrannosaurus rex thing. 
And some people complained about the hips on Skull Cruncher, Skull Smash, or whatever you want to call them. I, I, uh, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever, but this is the group and I think they look good. Now it's all about looking good, feeling good, and transforming well. So what we'll do is go to plain mode first and then we'll uh, kind of end things with his beast mode, I guess. And we begin by removing the head uh, unit. So we'll kind of come back here and begin by bringing these down and we sort of like fold the feet up and we bring all of this down. And that's where the bottom of this guy starts and it's what's going to sort of orient us as we go through here. We can turn these and bring them together. By the way, I'll, uh, I'll, it's well known that these translucent pieces that form the cockpit where um, Krunk can go are noted for being pretty thin. So you might want to generally put him in there before you put the legs together or split the legs when you want to put them in there. Nevertheless, for now, we do need to put all of this together. And that really gives us the front of the plane, which I think looks pretty darn nice. I guess straighten that up a little bit there. Oops, I made a little mistake. I forgot to bring out the little landing gear piece. Now we can put the legs together again. Pretend, pretend that I had that out all along, will ya? It would really help me out. Then we can kind of come to this part of the body where really what we're doing is bring this whole piece down. The whole thing comes down and snaps in just like that. We can leave that whole piece up for now. We take the, <coughs> pardon me, arms and we can rotate them around and rotate them around thusly and kind of bring them forward and bring them forward. Rotate the arms, bring out the wing. Come to this side and rotate the arm and bring out the wing. When you do that, you'll notice you have a rectangular tab here and you have a slot on the arm. You're looking to line those up so that it should tab in like that. And we can do it on this side because I hadn't done it over here yet either. There. Ugh. Squeeze all of that together. And this looks like a plane. That said, the only thing I guess left to do, if you really want to, is take your blaster and put it there, and take your other blaster and put it right there. And I think that this looks pretty fantastic myself. For the record, man, if you do open the cockpit, they even have the controls and dials and whatnot painted. I love that attention to detail. I wish that was the going norm that we got all the time. Now man, don't tell me that that's not cool because we all know that yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the sleeker Decepticon jets that's not, closing this is a nuisance though, it's one of the sleeker Decepticon jets that's not a seeker. Simple as that. What about doing the transformation from this to the other mode. Well, I just want to kind of get this closed back properly and then we'll do that conversion. Okay, so now with everything kind of put back in its proper place, we're going to begin the transformation and we really do that by kind of turning this guy over, if I'm honest. Right here, there's a little tiny black piece. It's part of the foot, it's the heel. And when you first notice the hinge, you might say, that's a weird spot to have a hinge. Why is the heel able to move like that? Because we want to be able to put down the uh, landing gear and then move this back as, in essence, a tail section. We take off these pieces here and we unpeg the arms and we begin to bring them down and we unpeg the other arm and we begin to bring it down as well. As you can probably guess, we're going to bring this back and bring this back and we're going to fold the hand up to bring out a claw foot and we're going to fold the other hand up to bring out a claw foot. I'm going to tell you now, when I first took this guy out of package, those claw feet were not 
fun to deal with. The arms did not at all want to move. I'm just gonna lay his blasters there out of the way for now. Now, with that done, we can kind of come to right here and pull down this chest piece, which should allow us to flip out the beast mode head and we can close that chest piece back up. So far, so good. Then we can kind of come here and this is where things get weird and interesting. We pick this off and we come really to the back and we pick that whole section off. It's so we can get to, I don't know if you can see here, it's so we can get to these little arms in here to get them out. They are a little bit of a nuisance to get out. There's one out and we'll get the other one out. And now we're gonna have to kind of collapse the body back up. I know that it looks like a little bit of a mess, but trust me, it comes together actually kind of nicely. The whole point of having the two hinges is so this can move down on the back and this piece can also kind of move down and solidify in right there, connecting up again with the back. That way we can, hopefully, stand the guy up a little bit more like this, but you'll notice he only has half of a head. So as I said, we have half a head, and really, the rest of them is, for all intents and purposes, done. And when you look at this, it just doesn't look right. This is where his partner comes into play. In a very weird way, up underneath, and I don't know how well I can show this, but I'm gonna try. Up underneath, right there, you'll notice that there's a black, like a black indentation. That indentation is where the head of Krunk will go. As for Krunk himself, he should basically be in this position. You'll notice, by the way, he's pinned at the hips and the knee. Uh, his lower legs form the lower jaw, and really this triangular piece that's on his arm, it's supposed to form the eye. And finally, with some fiddling and finagling, boom, here we have Snapdragon in his dragon mode, but this is definitely a T-Rex and not a dragon to me anyway. The transformation is pretty easy. Honestly, basically what you're doing is taking the plane, you're turning it upside down, you're lowering the chest piece, you're lowering the other chest piece so you can get the arms out. The arms, unfortunately, are on small ball joints where this is as straight as they get. Like, you, could, you can bend them up more, but you can't straighten them out any more than this. They do swivel, which is nice, but I feel like it'd be nice if they could straighten out a little bit more. Not a deal breaker, but uh, I just kind of wish that ball joint was probably designed a little bit differently. Maybe rather than going uh, down through the top of this piece, it could have been through the back of this piece or something. I'm not sure exactly how to work that, but notch it out a little bit more or something. Honestly, a hinge probably would have worked better there than a ball joint. The head, it, the head is, pardon me, fine. Uh, the articulation for the head is not great. Like, if it can move left and right, I can't get it to. It does move up and down, which is nice, but I can't get it to move left and right. The legs of this guy are the exact same as the arms of the robot mode, where, you know, they can go out to the side and you have that knee or elbow. Uh, you still don't have a wrist swivel or anything like that. That's a little unfortunate. But it's functional. It serves the purpose. It looks like Snapdragon. Yeah, it, it's, it's like the T-Rexy dragon thing. The only hard part is trying to put this lower jaw in and the head is on a small ball joint. If ever you lose this headmaster, if ever you break that ball joint, going to this mode is going to look really bad. Plus, of course, he wouldn't be able to be in the robot mode. I feel like most people are going to end up having this guy go between plane and robot because it's the safest thing. Trying to insert the lower jaw and the eyes, no, you know, nonetheless, is a bear. It looks good when it's done, but it is a bear. Overall, I'm gonna say the transformation, however, is still a solid eight and a half. He was getting 
say a 9.25 average. Now, overall, he's somewhere around an 8.75 or a 9. He is a great Transformer, a great Horicon, and a great offering. Perfect? No, but he is definitely a great update after 30 plus years. And here we are once again, and here this guy is once again. And you know what, like he's great. Great looking plane. Uh, definitely a serviceable, I'm going to call it a T-Rex. I know it's supposed to be a dragon, but I'm going to call it a T-Rex. Definitely serviceable. I wish that the di dino dragon arms, the little T-Rexy arms, had a little more mobility to them. But otherwise, it works quite good. Great plane. The robot mode is definitely fine. It's serviceable. The only things with this guy that bug me is the lack of a wrist swivel. We've become accustomed to it, taking away that point of articulation. Uh, without dropping the price, to me is unfortunate. And the elbow not quite bending to 90 degrees, I get it. I understand that it's kind of the way the molding works, but maybe there should have been some sort of a little notch or indent right there to allow a few more degrees. I don't think it would have been realistic necessarily to have over 90 degrees, uh, not without giving the guy a double elbow, and that would increase parts count. But for what it is, I feel like I'd have been okay had there been a little bit of molding done there to allow a deeper elbow bend. But even with that being the case, this guy is pretty fantastic overall. And I'm happy with how he turned out, and I'm very glad to see him next to his other Decepticon brethren, especially his Decepticon headmaster brethren. Let me know what you think about this guy. I appreciate you coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, don't forget that there's a donate link in the description. You can check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us, man. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.